<laughs> it's a ticking timer. We've had an absolute howler. <laughs> you've, just, you've just missed about 40 minutes of some of the best chat you've never heard. Six, 67 years of uh, <laughs> experience all been spun out onto a well, podcast. Well, to be fair, we, no weren't, can hear. No, we, knew we, we knew we weren't allowed to say it all. Yeah, we that's can, right. We can broadcast it. Edit, we've we've edited it, it out. It's, 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 we, were, we were talking about optimum performance and, uh, and we didn't press record. Hey, I didn't press record. Never rely on yeah, we needed an imp- imp- producer in it. Yeah, where's, he, uh, where's Sammy? Sammy Laird's fault, this is. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. Thought, I, I did actually look at that square and I thought, green must be for go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Red means stop. I don't, I don't work in the TV world, fellas. You should know that. What do you want to do? So how long are we going for? Well, how long you got now? Because obviously we've, well, we've I'm eaten. Right. I'm, I'm, I'm all right. good for time. Let me just go see Laura. I'm all right. Yeah, sorted. So, are obviously, start, that's an hour. We're going to have to start again and just yeah. cover yeah. off some of what we've done. Yeah. Um, no, we can still we've make got, it. We've got some of it. We've got some of it on vid, but the sound's going to be yeah, awful. Be shit, so, uh, yeah, let's go for it. Again. Go around the table then um, when Ollie gets back. But uh, what we missed, what we covered so far. <laughs> okay, so a summary of what we've covered, which we're about to cover again. Fox's feet. Is my feet, your <laughs> hairline. <laughs> Richie's hairline. We haven't even, go- we haven't my even, hairline. We haven't even <laughs> bothered with Richie's hairline. <laughs> <laughs> Um, oh, great, yeah. uh, and then basically our sort of journeys to where we are now to in a, in yeah. a sort of so just mismatch go, go way. around the houses with that then just while Ollie gets back in so uh, your reason Richie for so Richie Mann performance coach Gaz Bamford performance coach um, and Jason Fox TV star and Ollie Ollerton star. TV star um, yes, like we said, 67 years of uh, <laughs> military slash SF experience in the room. Not doesn't happen very often. It's really good to uh, share some stories and some insights, really, into the mindset of how the sort of certain people can motivate themselves to do. I'm going to use the word extraordinary things. Um, it feels uncomfortable saying it because you just we were always just doing what we like to do. But um, on the face of it, certainly taking some of the risks and chances yeah, that you way. do. Um, I'm good. <laughs> That's Ollie. That's good. <laughs> Just to explain the noise. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you want to wet? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good personally. So yeah, so um, that's what we're going to talk about. So Jace, your reasoning for joining the military? Joining the military is it, it can be summarised very quickly. I grew up in Luton. I wasn't academic. I didn't do well at school. I was getting into trouble when I left. And my old man used to be a Royal Marine, so I'd heard stories about the Marines, and so. Rubbish Some dits. somehow, rubbish yeah, rubbish dits. So, so, but somehow, subconsciously, at sixteen, I knew I needed to get myself out of that. And so, because of that s- slight influence from my dad, I went and joined the corps. Okay, Richie. Uh, yeah, I, I sort of summarised before, but it, it, it's um, as training, kickboxing, tie boxing, boxing. I feel like I've heard this. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you may have done. <laughs> <laughs> Boring. <laughs> um, just yeah, training. Just training loads and loads. Never yeah, even yeah. thought about joining the military. And then a guy that had gone on holiday. His cousin was a marine, and I was at college, totally clueless what to do with my life at the age of sixteen, seventeen. Um, saw the glossy brochure, the marines, and the rest is history. Next moment, I was in the careers office doing pull-ups with some fat Matlow looking at me, yeah, <laughs> yeah. wishing he could do the same. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Ollie. Yeah, um, I got into a lot of trouble when I was a kid. Um, around about uh, just when I got through that sort of crazy phase of uh, a few run-ins with the police, um, et cetera, et cetera, and it was it was a decision I made. It, was, it, it felt like a natural progression for me at 14 years old, and I actually decided I wanted to join the military. I think I don't think it was the Marines straight away. I just wanted to be in the military. Was, was that something to do with the sawn-off shotgun incident? That Is was that something to do with this. <laughs> I wasn't actually going to mention the son of shotgun, but, um, <laughs> but it's, it's in the public domain anyway. Yeah, so, yeah. Right, okay. but yeah, that's yeah. a long story. But um, yeah, so it was really. Uh, I don't know. I think it was. Um, yeah, it was that it, that moment. At Fourteen years old. I'm joining the military, uh, and it was kind of fuck you at school. And I'm, you know, I, was, I wasn't bad at academia, I suppose, but. Um, I just wasn't interested. Yep. So not a dissimilar story. Um, I read Bravo 2-0 as a kid. So to seed, watched TV shows about the Marines following MLs, etc. It just looked exciting. I was looking for excitement, adventure, and it seemed to offer that. No one back home, my perception was, thought that I would pass it. And 
uh, I did and uh, then went in. But I was just, I had no information and this is what we were talking about. I had no information about what it was going to take to get in. I was happy with that and just went and did it. People had passed before. I was content that I would be able to. And then I've kind of followed that through, going through my career, never been fully informed, just willing to take a bit of a chance, a bit of a punt and go get into sort of military careers, but then tr- transition out as well um, and just how that's had an effect. Um, yeah, so experiences whilst you were serving, what was it in, what wasn't happening in the core for you and why did you want to join SF, all three of you? Go opposite way around, go for it, Ollie. Yeah, I tell you, I, when I first passed out of training, I, I went straight to Northern Ireland, that was my first tour, and then um, we came straight back from that and then we were called out to Desert Storm. Um, um, but, I don't know. I came back from there, and I was I was pretty. D- I tell you what, I was I was in Northern Ireland, and as a young lad, um, I, this is how my first I was, I was I was disillusioned at a very early stage in my career, and I had a I don't know if you call it an epiphany. I don't know what to call it, but I had a, a realization pretty shortly after getting to Northern Ireland. I I, I kind of I looked. To, I looked at the things they were asking us to do, and I didn't have a, I didn't have any faith in what was happening out there. I, I, I just came up with this assumption that all these jobs they were asking us to do, all these sort of missions, operations, whatever, it was just they just weren't your life. Not that it was just the fact that I didn't believe there were there was any credibility in them. They were just putting us on the ground as bait, you know, with cannon fodder, because they wanted they obviously got their information, their intelligence from the follow up, yeah. you know. And I, I just had that realization. I just. I just then realised I didn't want to be part of that like kind of porn. Yeah, 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 I didn't. I just f- I, and also the fact I, you know, I wanted um, it just wasn't sharp enough for me. You know, it just I wanted something. I want and actually knowing that was there, knowing that there's something better out there, was the driving force for me. You know, if that wasn't out there, maybe I wouldn't have been. I may I, maybe I would have learned to be more satisfied. But when you know there's something out there that you can better yourself. Yeah. There's a, there's a bigger part of the pie you can have or whatever, yeah. you know that was that was a driving force to you know and really for me I had no belief in the fact I could do SF. It was actually my officer from four five yeah. commando that saw me one day when I was had my notice in to leave, who said if you don't leave you, you're going to regret that for the rest of your life. Yeah, yeah. And if it wasn't for him saying those words, giving me that tiny bit of confidence, I wouldn't have put me into SF. Do you know if he ever had a go? No, he never. I met him. I met him. Ironic. He came to one of the courses we do here. Yeah. yeah. Um, Did he? Yeah, he actually lives out. He's over in, him, not on a course. <laughs> not on a course. Payback. He brought his boys over yeah, to yeah, meet yeah. me. I'd not seen him since. Yeah, yeah. Last time I saw him was two, <coughs> 1992. Yeah. And that's the last wow. time I saw him. And then, yeah, he's, he's, he got in touch because he read my book. And then he came and uh, came to visit me. Is that, um, st- is that story in the book? No. Oh, right. Okay. No, no, it's, no, it's not in the book, actually. But he came to visit me. It was awesome to see him. But if, if, if it wasn't for his words... Those few words he said that night, I wouldn't have gone for SF. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't until you said that, but you know how you, again, I, I was in the Marines when um, we used to have a pool guy serving within the mm. commando, and there was a, I won't mention his name. Um, Describe I'll, I'll, I'll edit it. <laughs> <laughs> Is he sure? I've got, I've got uh, editors right, so I just edited that, but my true uh, commando, <laughs> it, was yeah. almost like, um, it was almost like, well... He seems like he's yeah. making it up a little bit. You know, that's not that high achievement. I feel like I could probably do that. And it was like almost close that gap from my yeah, understanding of what, uh, yeah, perception of who these guys were, mm. brought it right down to earth and goes, oh, I could do that. Yeah. Um, another guy you may or may not know, that's what we called him, I don't even know his name. No. Really tall, ex Matt though, actually. Mm. Um, but yeah, it was like, he is really achievable. And um, yeah, it's interesting sort of how that happens. And, but that was my impetus, and other people had a go that I knew that I thought, well, I'm at least as good as them in my, m- my own mind, and, mm. and, and managed to crack it. What about yourself, Richie, with core and um, SF? It seems like <coughs> listening to Ollie is like we we're at the same time, weren't it? Because I came straight out of basic training, straight to West Belfast, North Howard Street Mill, you know, um, sweat, young face, <laughs> young face, 17 year old with hair. Um, <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I was like, I don't know, yeah, I, th- I think the same things. I was, I was. Really still interested in, in boxing. and ended up on the boxing squad for a while and I was sort of playing around with things. But I, I, d- I got to that point where it genuinely felt like it was either stay or, or do something different, the SF thing, or leave. It just didn't... It was a bit of an anticlimax, basically, in the unit at the time uh, for me. And I just thought, 
And then, uh, I don't know, I just start to think, you know, Paul started looking at that a little bit more. A couple, couple of guys that I'd known that had done Paul, and, and you think, you know, they were good guys, really, and, and so on. Um, they've been successful. Yeah, 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 yeah. they've been successful, um, good guys. And then, I suppose that there's that sort of, you know, you doubt yourself, don't you? The, you yeah, know, the, the doubts are there, and you think... Still do. Yeah, still do, all the time. And, yeah. uh, you know, in anything that you, you do, and I think that's one of the things that people think... You know, the, the people sat around the table here, yeah, yeah. you know, and you see the guys, you know, you see on the show and all that kind of thing. It's like that there are no doubts. Well, I mean, that's one of the things that we work in and you will work in a lot in the psychology bit is, you know, the fear is 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 always there yeah, and the course. doubts and all that sort of stuff. And was, was I good enough to... I, I was... Uh, deep down, I knew that I was sort of fit enough and I could mentally take myself down into very sort of, I suppose, deep rabbit warrens of, of like keeping in there and hanging in there because I'd... I suppose I was talking to someone the other day, just when I was in Nottingham doing my Thai boxing before I'd even joined the corps, I was doing sort of three-hour sessions with these monster tr fighters, you know, and, sort of, you know, ages sort of 14, and I knew I could really sort of push myself. And that was that was the thing that kind of helped me, I think, to do massively, it. Massively, massively agree and relate to that. So what, what do you think is that, what is that? Is it constant little improvements that have got you to that understanding and willing to challenge yourself, or... Do you think there's something inside you that is just got that no quit attitude? I think there. I think with all of us, probably there is a no quit attitude at some points, and I, and I, f I usually find, I'm well, speaking for myself here, but when you get into the, the more sort of challenging it gets, the deeper you dig in, yeah. mm. um, and that that's what really sort of helps. I mean, I think um, going into a broader perspective, I think get, knowing myself as I've got older has come from dealing with anxiety, dealing with doubts, dealing with those those sort of things. And I think, as Foxy was saying there uh, earlier on, um, you come back on to probably, it was, um, <laughs> come, back <in> time <laughs> to come back on the second time round. <laughs> um, yeah, just just being able to sort of d um, deal with the doubts and, and sort of move forward with them, despite of them, anyway, in spite of them, I'm sorry, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know. Um, Foxy, your um, experiences in the core and then why you went SF? Yeah, I, uh, I I went into the corps and then I actually joined the SBS as a signaler, so I was attached to them and I was there for a, f a decent period of time. So that was something that had already whet my appetite, but I still hadn't fulfilled my goals within the corps. I still wanted to go out there and do the sort of GD work of just being a soldier because I was a signaler before, and so I did. I went back to the, a, a unit, joined Recce Troop had a look at the ML world which was another route I was considering to go down but then in the end if I'm honest and this is not taking anything away from the Royal Marines but I loved soldiering but I just hated the bull that goes with working in a Royal Marines unit which there w there is a lot of you can't get you, you cannot get away from it because it does operate with very young guys straight out of training there needs to be that sort of what yeah, everyone would imagine yeah the regimented way of life <clears throat> And I saw, having had my experience at Paul, I just saw it as a more grown-up unit where you're given a lot more autonomy, although also a lot more rope to hang yourself with if you want to. But, you know, as a, even as a young Marine or a trooper, whatever you want to call them, you were given far, far more responsibility, and I already knew that. So the, the decision was made, and then, you know, in 2001, Twin Towers are hit. That then gave even more purpose, and off I went. But with regard to the, the, the doubt thing... I had, there's always that doubt, but for me, this was my last make or break, and I just gave myself no choice other than to continue and try and get into the, the SBS, because otherwise I was going outside, and then that would, I didn't know what I was going to do. Yeah, I forget what that's called, but almost having that goal where there's no fallback plan. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. And it, so for me, I was very much going to punch out if uh, I wasn't, whether I would or not, I don't know, but that mm. was the sort of yeah. thought I had. The, the, the military wasn't doing it for me. And same as you, Foxy, Twin Towers has happened and I was like, I need to help that situation. So I volunteered and I knew a few people that had gone before me and they'd been successful. I knew a ton of people that had been unsuccessful, but um, the people that had been successful, I thought I could do that. And so I can relate to that. And it, for me at the time, it seemed like the reason I was doing it was to try and help that situation of the Twin Towers. Again, I say it time and time again, but not wanting to argue the rationale of that. I'm not convinced we have at all. But uh, 
Uh, go on. Just one other thing I'd like to say. Put your hand up, mate. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> was obviously, obviously, it is, it is people like Richie and Ollie, and I've spoke to Ollie about this before, that have inspired me as well. You know, I knew them when they were SCs, when they were SBS operators, and sort of seeing them do their business, I was like, yeah, I want to be a part of that. Oh, I'm, I'm happy to tap into that Cheers. because, so, yeah. so my, like I said, my, my reason was this is this is it, but this is it. Well, this is tr- this is interesting because my reason was uh, Bravo Two Zero. I read the book. <clears throat> now I didn't know those people in the book, but it sounded mega. I knew they were human. So if they've done it, my mindset is, well, I could probably do it if I put myself to it enough. Um, but I didn't know anybody that was serving. Um, but I was happy with that. Now it seems like people want more information. To be fair, partially because of the TV show and mm. yourselves putting yourselves out there, um, there is more ability to use role models and have access to the role models to inspire you to do what it is. Is that part of what you enjoy about what you do? Uh, and yourself, Richie, with... with Regards to your experiences, is that sort of part and parcel of I like the TV show? The for example, t- the, there's there's different reasons for the TV show. Um, one of them is I was absolutely strapped for work. I wasn't getting any. I'd, I'd, I'd actually bitten the bullet and tried to go back into the security industry. I actually did my refresher cor- course, my CP refresher course with yeah. Ray. Um, yeah. And I'd actually picked up some work because it was it was um, it was fr- it was very freelance with a small company. It was with people that we knew who they'd given me the job, and I was going to be going with a friend of mine, Sean. And then at the last minute, that fell through, and then there was no work. You know, I'd written off six months for a really well paid job, and then it just fell through at the last minute, as these things do. And I, then I was prop basically got the phone call for the TV show, and I don't know. I just saw it as something that we could do me and ollie had already spoken about trying to set up something that helped people whether it be corporate team building or just inspiring people and making and showing people that they can push themselves further yeah. than they actually think yeah. and then the, this thing came about didn't it and it was it was, was it just, just like call them, was it? yeah there was, it, this, uh, the story is a bit longer than i actually picked up a bit of work looking after a uh, production crew out away in madagascar doing a bit of safety for them and then did yeah, a decent did, did a on your treasure. Yeah, oh, found, found some pirate treasure. And um but did a did a decent job and just by chance someone was talking to someone else about me getting involved. Uh, uh they were looking at look f- trying to find the XSF people, sorry, to, to 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 sort of head this show up and they didn't know where they were gonna find them and it was like, Well, have you tried this bloke? I work with him out in Madagascar. That's where the call came from. And then that's where I was like, Do we do you need more? There's this other bloke on it. <laughs> so we all came in like that and so it, it's yeah, it was perfect timing. But on the flip side, I did see it. We did see it as a platform to sort of break barriers down. And I did use it to talk about mental health. And I I wanted to show people that because I knew it did it, it did me an awful lot of good, you know, selfishly. But I also wanted to sort of show that it it can affect anyone. Because the thing that annoyed me a little bit about the branding of having PTSD was people going, "How's he got it? He's he's a," and I'm like. I am, and I was, but I'm still a human being. Do you know what I mean? So, I, there's a lot of different Some reasons. Say otherwise, mate. Yeah, yeah, there are exactly. Yeah, <laughs> cheers. There's a lot of other. Um, there's a lot of reasons, but they're they're probably the the main ones. I'd say, wouldn't you? You know. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, the show. You know, if, if we sort of go forward now, I mean, it's into its fifth series now, currently airing on TV now, and you know, I feel it's got to a stage now where we've got a duty. You know, it's given us a voice, you know, because of our media, att- you know, our, our, our celebrity, I hate saying that word, but our celebrity sort of ex- um, quite status. Enjoyed it. Like, quite enjoyed it, actually. No, well, <laughs> 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 it does have its moments, Rich, <laughs> it does have its moments. But the thing is, I, I do feel that we have got, you know, it's not about stroking our egos. I, I feel that, you know, I, I saw the power of that show and I, I, I failed to understand the purpose of it on the yeah. first series. Um, and, and why we were doing it. We were doing it because we could create a bit of exposure for our business, like Foxy just said. But, um, you know, the moment when Foxy did state on national TV about having PTSD, we saw such a major, massive ripple effect across the whole of the UK, not just from veterans, but from everyone. You know, a lot of people that had suffered with some kind of mental illness at um, some point in their lives. It was it was amazing, and, and then it, it showed you and, and, and it proved how powerful the show was. The show is not about military, as far as we're concerned. It's about human psychology, and it's about addressing issues that people face on a daily basis, every sex, every genre. So it, it's just it's such a powerful, 
it, powerful machine. These, you know, and it, it's inspiring it, loads of people. It is the best thing about being a part of that show is the fact that you can you get feedback that it, people yeah. are gaining how, from how it, how it helped, feedback. how it helped people. Well, you get it in all sorts of in-person, social media, messages, you know, word of mouth. You, you, you get, there is an awful lot of feedback from it and it's, but it is prob- it is the best feeling from that is just knowing that you're helping people. I wanted to ask you before, Foxy, I'm, I suppose leading on to that, but what, what brought you out, no, I say brought you out, but the PTSD, what was the sort of turnaround for you if there was a turnaround point? What for managing it? Yeah. I don't not I don't even need to manage it. There's it's not there as far as I'm concerned. I think you can actually cure. You get you become you you know what you basically learn a little bit about yourself and how you need to then move forward with your life. But my turning point really, if I'm honest, was before it started to get better was when I'm stood on top of a cliff contemplating suicide and I just was like, hang on a minute, I, I Things are going drastically wrong in my life, as far as I was concerned. I either I either jump, or I if I turn around from this cliff now, I need to I need to be honest with myself and address the situations or the things that are going on in my head properly. Be honest with myself and start looking for a positive route to the new stage of my journey. Mm. So that was the turning point. The next turning point was just going on that journey and eventually finding someone that would help me find my own route out of that. See, it's interesting you said that, and I don't know what your, your thoughts are, but it's, it's like I, I sort of work with people around getting them to, you know, and this time of year, you know, mm. years resolutions and change and goals, and yep. but people don't change, you know, or Habits. people, yeah, yeah, habitual patterns of behaviour, everyone's into those, you know, that's that's what takes place. And often it's just that enough pain. And I think that in, in the work that you probably do, guys, as well, and that I do, is it, trying to get people proactively to change Rather mm. than get to a point where there's Reactive. so much pain yeah. that they they're literally at that you know that mm. metaphorical rock you know uh, cliff face yeah. they're either going to turn around or or whatever you know so it's that it's getting people to actually sort of make change yeah. and that's been that's been the same for myself because you know I think we've all at times you know uh, anxiety you know uh, we were talking about doubt and th- those kind of things those negative mind states you know for me personally. One of the one of the, I suppose, kryptonites for me was taking the mental strength that allowed me to do selection and all those kind of things. I took the fight of that towards anxiety and 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 fears and stuff rather than an acceptance of. Mm. It was like fight them, and and yeah. there was ultimately only one winner if you keep going at that. A common a common thread of people that I talk to from our neck of the woods is how they uh, frame a challenge. Sorry, f- frame a threat. Yeah, we we view it as a challenge, as an obstacle, and we go at it and go around it. As opposed to a lot of people, it seems to me this is all just anecdotal, but just sort of t- t- talk to people. They face a problem, it be- seems overwhelming, and they 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 avoid it, and they hmm. just don't want to deal with it, and they go put it in a box and then go away. And if you're, and I think we were talking earlier, Jace, about um, your lowest point, and again we were working together at the time, and I just remember you being. We talked about this before. But I remember being at, and just you were distant in the sense of you weren't coming into work, and I didn't really understand why. But work was so busy that we didn't have time to think about why why you weren't coming to work. And then there was a time you went outside and didn't really understand the full picture. I think you were telling people problem with your hearing, Mm. and I was like, okay, didn't know he had a problem with his hearing uh, that was significant enough anyway. But then um, you came back and we we spoke about how it's written in the book, and it was something that I struggled with reading or listening to it, and how you, because we met in a corridor, I joked about your current occupation, you were working for Sodexo, you joked about my hairline, uh, which hurt real bad, <laughs> no, pretty sure I'm talking about this again, because I've not got over it still, still <laughs> hanging on. Um, but, uh, I've, I've let it go, mate. Yeah, 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 yeah. Let it go. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, Cap off. Liberation, yeah. freedom on the other side, mate. It's coming, <laughs> next week it's coming. Um, I'm ready. But no, what 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 was it that you, you touched on it no. the other day? early mate but what was the reason you were so low like if you're honest with yourself now okay that, what, that, that's that's it right there the reason i was so low is because i was actually lying to myself about where i was at in my in my head i was pretending there wasn't really a problem i was pretending i wanted to be someone else in a job i didn't like and because of all of those things i was basically lying to myself which was me off even more and that in line with the fact that i was probably 
going through that bout of depression because I'd lost the job that I did love, it just put me into a, a really, really dark place. So a lot of it, in my mind, it is about being honest with yourself and then also understanding that to sort yourself out, you need to go and talk to someone. It's, it's, that's the biggest thing. It's just getting getting on, you know, getting on a horse, getting on that horse and going on that journey and finding the right person that you need to talk to and taking that leap of faith. You find it also, I suppose, as, as guys and then as particularly XSF, even within our own heads, there's, you've got to be strong. You've got to, you can't show yeah. sort of, can't show sort of weakness you, you, you've got to be strong and I think that's the perception and probably what we sort of bought into but then you know my biggest thing in, in talking to people now about the the mental skills training side is really to sort of say that the courage is really to turn into emotions to be you know vulnerability and all, all those kind of mm -hmm. things and with that and people equate them as soft skills but I think as we as we all know they're not soft at all they're the, the, they're the things that are most challenging. I've had this discussion not long ago and I, they were like ah, yeah but you know to to open up and that that's not to be a man and I was like what are you on about? I says if you look at it nowadays what's going on to be a man in the old sense of the word isn't working because blokes are taking their lives left right in Chelsea. Mm. You can still be this rugged individual you know. Yeah. We're all sat around a table now we've all done jobs that people would deem as being probably one of the most alpha male jobs in the world. And I'm still that person. I'm still that rugged bloke, I like to think. And I go off and do stuff. I challenge myself. You know, I, I try to be hardy in what I do. But I still, what I do do is I check in with my mates. It doesn't have to be like a big hug and cry and we kiss each other. I check in with you. Yeah, we don't see all the time. But, you know, yeah, when we yeah. do, we have a quick chat. And I check in with you all the time. And I do the same with really good friends, Rob. You know, it's people that, that we know. It's that trusted environment. Isn't it? When, you were, when you were working in the job, there were moments, I can remember moments we were deployed and things were happening, things had been a bit fruity, a bit tasty, whatever, and we had moments where we could let off some steam, we could vent off, and times there was people sharing emotions, etc. It was it was something that we weren't doing it consciously. No. We were doing it reactively rather than proactively, and I think now there's a bit of a bow wave of people recognising that there's more need for proactive stuff to get this off people's chest because it's stress ultimately and you're wearing too much. You need a way of getting that, getting it off, but uh, I can relate to it. Um, and when you step outside the military, maybe there's not that sort of yeah. safe environment for you to do that. People that understand necessarily, but it impacts not only your well-being but performance as well. Yeah. Mm. You know, so you're trying to perform at those elite levels or any sort of level, and if you can't think clearly because you're so consumed in the inner critic or the negative, what's going on? On, on about the suicide things, I, I, sp I spoke to a guy at a university in Nottingham. And he said there's one to two deaths in the construction industry per day. Mm. Yeah, yeah. yeah and I, I, had to, I had to sort of like, con I don't know if you'd heard that, I had yeah. to like oh, confirm yeah, it with him. Ago. And you're like, f hell, it's like, yeah. and like you said, uh, and that's why it's so great that like these guys are out there putting on the program and, and talking about that sort of stuff because, you know, is, is that, you just can't let that, let that wash. No. Uh, agreed, agreed. It's massive. I've done a bit of work consulting into the construction industry with a, with another company and, uh, Similar stat blew my mind that there was such oh, really? a problem. And I th again, I could talk about why I think that is. I've got no idea. If I'm perfectly honest, I struggle, if I'm honest, to understand that mentality. I've, I've had difficult times, but I don't think, again, I've had to reflect on this and go, why, why does it seem that I'm resilient? Have I had hardship? You know, For example, my mum passed away of cancer seven weeks last year, just from diagnosis to death. And I dealt with it. Um, it's tough. And life throws these challenges at you. But again, I've just said it myself. I almost frame stuff as a challenge. I was there in that scenario to try and support yeah. my dad. Or I was there to help the family in another way. And I sort of set myself these little challenges to try and help myself with it. Because, you know, and I found ways to sort of, uh, you know, trusted people to sort of share your sort of feelings with. But I struggle with that. You know, so many people, genuinely, I can't get my head around it. Even what your story, Jace, when you was at the cliff edge, I struggle to get my head around being so low i've not experienced it if I'm, if I'm honest i didn't i see looking back i don't think i'd have ever seen myself being that low i don't know what happened in that period of time there was obviously a a, 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 syst a system of events or a you know a sequence of events sorry that just fed into the next one and the next one and the next one and i probably wasn't in the right headspace and i probably wasn't hanging around with the right people i didn't have the network at the time, partly through my own fault, because I'd taken myself away from the people that actually did matter to me. And I'd also ended up in a, a, a circle of people that was 
just toxic and it and it needed to change and I think yes I was there thinking dark thoughts and 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 thinking oh god I've, I've not achieved anything and I'm now or I've achieved stuff but now I'm failing and my time in this world is looking sketchy I think all it was was if I'm honest with myself, I probably never was going to throw myself off. I just needed to have that moment. It, I needed to push myself to a place where I was like, sakes, sort your shit out and do what you talking about that you two are doing, which is motivating people to... My motivator was myself just stood there going, you absolute bell end. Sort your shit out. That's yeah. reflection. That yeah. is reflection, isn't it? Yeah. And it's almost the, the extreme level. It's mm. nice to hear you say that, that you felt you probably weren't ever, but obviously some people take it one mm. well, but the thing is, you, further, that is just, I see that as that had to die you for something else to be it was like, that was like my yeah. our ayahuasca yeah. trip you yeah, know what I mean exactly. yeah, that, yeah, that had to die in you for, for you to feel yeah. good for something the person you are today mm. you know what I mean but without going to the cliff edge you would never yeah I, mean, I wouldn't have you br- I would have if you just stayed back from the cliff edge you could have done that for all your life Never face the problem. No, and, I'd, I'd, and what would have happened probably is I'd have probably been miserable, depressed all the time. I'd have probably got ill once in a while. I might have, you know, mm. because I do believe it's all linked. It all just yeah. feeds into itself. And yeah, and you just sort of, you don't really, you, you know, you give off what you give off. And if yeah. you're not giving off positive energy, then you're, you're yeah, giving off negative. And yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. People think Sorry. I'm a bit of a hippie and a, 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 a druid for thinking like that. But I, I genuinely oh, do but believe in like... Be, even being honest there, isn't yeah, I yeah. think it's... It, being honest, and again, people think it's they still even now. I think equate it with weakness, don't they? They still equate it with people not coping and, and those kind of things, you know. But um, I view it in like people. But people use the wrong language. I think they talk about it as an illness, mental health. It's an. It, they, they often think of it as a negative. It's like you have you have physical health. It's going to be high. Sometimes it's going to be low. You fill yourself full of rubbish. Your physical health is not going to be as good. Well, same with mental health. If you fill your head with rubbish, you are going to feel low about yourself. Mm. And just understand that when you're low, you're just low. It doesn't mean you, the mental illness is very different. It's a completely different. Could, people yeah. confuse the two all the time. Yeah. Yeah. It's it, it's um it's being depressed or being low and and feeling upset or being anxious or f- being fearful. You're allowed to feel like that. It's a normal. Otherwise, they wouldn't exist. If you if, if if you end up feeling a certain way, you're allowed to feel like that. There's a reason for it, and I think a lot about I hate the word resilience, but people talk about how what is resilience? How do you become resilient? A lot of it is just being emotionally aware, and I think you you'll be a lot more your your mental health will be a lot better if you just allowed yourself to feel those emotions, be acknowledge them, yeah. be honest with yourself, explore them, and then work out what you need to do to get out the other side. It's That's just a difficult bit, though. Isn't yeah, it? yeah, it's yeah. Just like into your mind. For, into mindfulness kind of stuff is like to be able to turn into negative emotions and actually sort of and when you do it's again quite sort of uh, you know that liberating experience of fe- actually feeling the whole experience of, of what you're doing but I also think you're right in terms of the the, the, uh, the language that people use and yeah. so if you talk about mental skills training you know I say I always say in the world there's three things you can train you can train your craft as in whatever you're doing in, in those sort of things you can train your, your body yeah you can get, seen get, yeah they have seen <laughs> <laughs> or, or you can train your mind and that, i think that third bit is that people don't actually recognize that you can train the mind mm. yeah and and we, and we talk about in the work they do um bringing back people back into the present moment because so often so much of this uh internal dialogue is in the past you know ruminating on what we should have done or you know or in the future so yeah, I completely worries. agree. So no. how, how can you bring yourself back into the present more often? Yeah, is really where being reflective on your present situation. Yeah. I mean, you look at Fox's situation; yeah. he was projecting himself forward. Yeah. Best part of my life was behind me. Yeah. It's like mm. it's never going to be as good as exactly. that. And, y- and you're, and that there's no reason why that is the case. Like you think about you describing your situation, Ollie, about how you left. You were always something better. You were looking for something better, mm. and then now you've only l- quite late on you've found this purpose do you know what yeah. i mean and so but yeah. you, you couldn't work it out until then because and you were looking forward all the time going i don't see what i'm even doing yeah. but that's the thing is you know at that time for me you know there was a big change in me at that, that that point in my life and it was that was the start of me actually getting back on track but the thing is it was like we're always looking externally for this fix yeah for this pur- you know this purpose this 
this fix, this something that's going to please us. And you know, for me, I turned to to drink. I was um, hooked on Valium as well. At, at one point in my life, it was it was, it was a um, quite a shit cocktail of, of things to be. Yeah, it was, it was, yeah, then was, then, oh, no. yeah. <laughs> but um, but the thing is, that the Just moment I realised that <laughs> yeah. that happiness, that fulfilment, is not out there. It's within. You have to look within. within before you find it out there. That that was the switch for me, uh, and and that's why I talk you know a lot of these days about you know people talk about mental health you know, but I find a lot of people and I see a lot of people on the talking circuit and on on Instagram, they're stuck in the problem because yeah, they're not. and I you know a lot of stuff I talk and I had to question myself because I talk about situations that have been significant, but I, I think all the time I'm putting myself back in that place I don't want to be. And I think a lot of people are missing that the fact they have to look at mental wealth. You know what I mean? Mental health, mental wealth is when you start investing in yourself. You know, it's like if we if we all take it back to selection, we went on selection, we, we didn't, we knew that path wasn't gonna be comfortable. We didn't join it because it was gonna be comfortable, but we knew it was a process to get to somewhere we wanted to be. And that's really what people need. When you talk about change and everything else, Rich, People have got to understand that you've got to put your feelings outside. You've got to, you've got to get away from the emotion of it because it's not going to be comfortable. But you have to put a process into play for any kind of change, and that mm. is taking a short-term step into discomfort for a long-term gain. The thing is, the problem with like everyone. Challenge, isn't it? Yeah, the problem with everyone. The way we're wired, we're wired the other way. We're wired to take the short-term the short-term comfort, but that leads to long-term pain. I think people it's right. such a hard thing to measure, isn't it? The only thing or the only the easy thing to measure is financial wealth. And so yeah. you go, right, okay, I'm gonna try and be rich because that is gonna make me happy. Yeah. And then the reality is there's so much evidence out there that that's not the case. Uh, there's so many billionaires telling you, don't chase wealth. It's not going to make you happy. You know, easy for you to yeah. say. <laughs> yeah. Easy for you to yeah. say. Yeah. But then you've yeah. got people that have got next to nothing. They're like, I'm good to go. I'm but we've seen, them in, we've seen them in the private security bill. Un, 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 yeah. Untold wealth. Literally yeah. untold wealth. And I've not seen one of them that's stable yeah. at all. You know, yeah. um, and to Super popping man. volumes and, and drinking, you know. Oh, that was Ollie. That was that was Ollie. Ollie. <laughs> yeah. 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 You were on that job, <laughs> 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 But they're just, yeah, just constant. You got that the wrong way around, mate. Just constant. So we've seen, we've seen the wealth that just, you know, um, yeah. I, I put out a thing that vibrancy is the new wealth, is to feel, to feel vibrant in your mm. life. Because most people are just running at the edge of it all the time. Yeah. You know, and absolutely just, you know, whether it's stress, whether it's kids and, I suppose our generation, what you see is like people, you know, that they've got to do everything for the kids. They've got to do everything, you know, you know, and particularly like I talk from a bloke's perspective a bit, you know, but they've got to be, you know, the best husband, the best dad, the best worker, bringing in the best job to get the best time. You know, and it's just yeah, like yeah. this constant yeah. conveyor belt of stuff, you know, yeah. and how are you going to feel vibrant when you feel like that? You know, so I, yeah. I, I grew up playing with He-Man. Talk about body Body yeah. issues, you know <laughs> what I mean? So, <laughs> yeah. um, but no, I, I completely agree that the pressure's on people to get to certain standards. And, and we're not, we're just given these messages. I genuinely think social media's one of the worst things because of that. I mean, I... Social I media now is like He-Man. It's what He-Man was. Do you you're exactly, I mean? yeah, it's bang on, yeah, yeah. it's bang on. Uh, but people live it, don't they? They yeah, live it for they, hours yeah. and hours and it's their only way of getting feedback. Like you spoke about feedback from the show um, and how that gives positive feedback for you people are looking for feedback from their social media and it's that's all they've got now to sort of get them get their measure of success and it's just i worry about it too much mm. Mm. yeah but that going back to the, that sort of uh, present moment thing i'm thinking about us, us guys doing the job it was easy it was almost easier to lock in to you know when you're on a task a mission training whatever to be able to lock into the present moment because all of a sudden we'd, you're with the team and, and, and you're sort of passionate about it and just that that obviously drives that that fo stubborn that fo <laughs> stubborn yeah, yeah we're all stubborn stubbornness think, focus yeah, you know yeah, it's all it. there isn't it but then again in other areas of your life it's, it's difficult to, to so just bring. just on that when you're in the moment of the super high stress occasions in your life i'm sure you've got loads do you quite two questions kind of about the round about the same one do you know what you did to cope with that stress are you aware with what you did or did you just do it because you, your purpose was so clear? Just I, go on, Jess. I think, because we've spoken about this, I've talked about it with hundreds of other people, I've spoken it with you, about you. 
when, <laughs> when we're sat here now, where our careers in the special forces is done, it's over. We can look back on it and reflect and have a you know have a laugh. And when you think about it now, when you look at some of the things we did, you're like, ah, how the f did we do that stuff? Mm. Do you know what I mean? When you've been like jump haloing through the night sky and you're like five blokes That's land the first on one that jumps to mind when, you, when, when you land when on a, a, a rigs, when you land on a rigs. when you land on a yeah. postage stamp literally as a team of guys you're like ah. and then you're off and doing something else or you're diving on you're diving oil rigs for oil me. rigs so and dangerous them at night. I, you know the most dangerous thing but i think I've it comes done. down to not thinking about what could go wrong because it hasn't gone wrong yet mm. and there's no point yeah. worrying about it it's about I think there is a lot to be said for SF guys are very spiritual in the way that they just live in the moment, mm. and they're and they're confident as well, admittedly. So how do you look? How do you translate to then you being stood on the cliff, struggling to be I in know. the moment? Then do you know that's what I mean. What I mean. I, that's what I mean. I had a blip, and it was that it was that bit moment of realization where I was suddenly like, "Hang on, I'm still that bloke." Because for me, I think I lost my sense of identity. I lost my sense of belonging, and I thought that it had gone with that with that organization when actually I suddenly realized I'm still that bloke. Yeah. I'm st I've still, my, st I still belong to me. I am my yeah, identity. Yeah, yeah. I just need to adopt the old mindset, which it's I had when we was in the There's something called self determination theory, which is why people do what they do and that belongingness. And when, when, and again, I think this is where people struggle the most with transitioning from the military personally is where they've lost their, Without realizing it, the, the military was the purpose, even though they hate it, love hate relationship with mm. it. Um, and then when they stepped away from it, they they didn't understand just how much support it was mm. for them because actually, outside of that brotherhood, call it what you will, maybe you didn't have as many friends or real friends as you thought you did. And then actually, these are the people that you relied on when times are hard or more difficult or just a change of scenery, you know. And, I, and yeah, it's a uh, it's strange. I think going back to the the stressful moments, you know. So you felt you just could get in the moment, and that do you know? Do you, can you think yourself how you dealt with the stress? You know, so again, not wanting to name the operation, but you're you're in the trench, and all hell's kicking off. And I think there was a lot, a lot of that was to do with just being being present, which meant you knew you're in a shit place. But some of it was taking, str you know, you take strength from yourself when you when you need to give yourself that proverbial slap around your face when you're sort of having a bit of a moment when things are bad. For me, it was about like, hang on a minute, you are this person, you've done this, you've achieved this, you, be lot, you, be you deserve to belong here. Yeah. A lot of it is taking strength from the people around you, probably more so that, knowing that you're, yeah, yeah. knowing that you're... Um, accountable to them. Yeah, yeah, and also they're accountable to you and, they're yeah, yeah. and you're like, hang on a minute, I know these blokes, they're awesome. Yeah, they're, yeah. They're, we, you know, everyone talks to me about how do you motivate a team, and I was like, I, I was in the SF, I was lucky. Yeah, yeah. I didn't really need to motivate them because they're, yeah. s there's, they're just individuals. Yeah, that's self awesome. discipline. Yeah. Yeah. It's like that jumping off in the in the halo bit on the end of you know people have said said oh do you feel like you're not gonna you weren't gonna jump or mm. you'd rather not let the people down yeah. around yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. To mm. be honest, I'd rather just hoy myself out than let the people down around you. It and comes and that, that was. Self self image, you know, your self image is that part of that organization, <coughs> and you're mm. so tied into the values, the ethos of that organization, that you need to live up to that standard. It almost drags you up sometimes, mm. because the internal inner critic, like you mentioned, Richie, was it's going. You don't want to do this. This is mega dangerous. <laughs> yeah. um, or you drop over the side of a boat into ice cold water, and there's an oil rig at KOA, and you're like. This is going to be epic. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> just just yeah. Sorry, just a quick dip there. I remember <coughs> we got to California. We we're going to go and do the halo jump. And we'd not done the j any jumps in in UK. And so the first jump was going to be on the Monday morning. So we got straight to, to there. Lads were like that. Right, get the bus, San Diego. So we went down to the, for the weekend. <laughs> Yeehaw! And it was like, <laughs> woo -hoo, Everyone like, you know, it's just like, party on and all the rest of it. And... Um, so we're coming back on the bus on the Sunday night and the next jump's next morning. And it's just like, you know, it starts to, everyone's had a load of drink as well. Yeah. Um, and it starts to get quieter in the bus. And it's like that. <laughs> <laughs> you can, you can the, the dawn is real, yeah, the dawning realisation. Like, yeah. Pensive, yeah. pensive yeah. Yeah. going on. And all of a sudden from the back, Ding is in the back and he's like that. Just out the, you know, out the quiet. All of a sudden like that. I'm fucking shitting myself. <laughs> <laughs> And that was the reaction of everyone yeah, in the yeah, coach. Yeah. Everyone was like that. <laughs> Woo! You know, not just me. Yeah. Oh, Ollie, yeah. yourself, mate, how do you deal with the stress? 
I don't know. But no, again, me and Foxy had talked about that, and I, I do believe, you know, um, how how we manage, you know, in situations where it's, everything's spiraling out of control, and you know, there's one particular um, time again when I when I was in Iraq, and it was the first time I'd been in any kind of scrap outside of the military, and um, you know, it, it, for me, when I look at it, and when I look back, I realise it's down to you. Your breathing has a lot to do with it. And I think we we do it naturally because we've we've been trained in, you know, we've we've been highly trained, so we naturally have a a good pattern of breathing. But you know, and, and we teach it a lot now with with uh, breakpoint. But um, you know, just having a co coordinated system of breathing really helps to lower cortisol and helps you deal with the situations. And and that was for me and Foxy sort of realising how did we slow those situations down? And it was the fact that. The, of the matter that we didn't get stressed, our breathing didn't become erratic, which then increases cortisol, which then means you get confused. Um, so we kind of reverse that, and 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 we understand that so that's how we get we used to get through those situations. Yeah. They teach that now in some SF units mm. we were talking about before. Box they breathing, teach box breathing, you know, mm. and it's for that very thing. It's a very simple yeah. thing, but it's you know we we train it now. We call it breathe, recalibrate, deliver, because as soon as you're in a stressful <clears> situation, whether that's falling into cold water. Or you, you know, being, um, you know, attacked at gunfight. You know, you, you, you're in a gunfight or whatever. If you control your breathing, you start to make decisions based yeah. on clarity and not. I think. Sorry, just on that one, mate. I, I think people misconstrue what the, the present moment is. It sounds a stupid thing to say, <laughs> but they think, oh yeah, I'm being present. But really, they're kind of thinking, you know, ten seconds, even thirty seconds, a minute in front. But when you're actually in the present moment. At that point, you know, and that might be sort of like bullets ringing past your head or, or whatever it is. But right in that present moment is where I suppose the training kicks in that, mm. you know, that mm. lads would describe. So you're in you're in the training. And, and I was um, did that podcast uh, with John White, as we were talking about, um, and he's just flown through the air, blown up um, and he ends, you know, he ends triple amputee from it. Um, but immediately, you know, that he's landed in that moment, he's sending contact reports. He's trying to get his tourniquet. He's going back to his training at mm. that moment. And I think it's that... Phenomenal, that's, it? It's phenomenal. So, so I, think, I think it's the training that brings you back into the present moment. That's what we've... Because we've been so many Agreed. times through it. Yeah, conditioned. In that moment. Conditioned, conditioned yeah. yeah. We, there's a saying, isn't there? You don't rise to the occasion. You fall to the lowest level of training. Yes. And th therefore, you have to take your training up to as high a level. Uh, we were talking about it earlier, about being proactive with stress management as opposed to reactive expecting yourself to be able to manage stuff when it comes your way well it don't work like that you've mm. got to prepare yourself and yeah. we were conditioned stressed <coughs> our training was as tough if not harder than the actual reality so we were ready and we were able i think to sort of control our physiology a little bit better because we'd been mm. in that scenario it wasn't so shocking uh, we completely gone because we what you do in all that training when you're doing that. I mean, like I, I, I did, I was in the Marines for 10 years before I went SF, so I, and there, all that in itself is a period of time where I'm conditioning myself to be in a stressful situation that when it does happen, it just happens. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Because the, the breathing thing, your fight flight response is kicking off, you're not going to control that. that. That is happening whether you like or not. The breathing is the only way, yes, along with eye movement as well, apparently, um, how you can then bring back your physiology oh, yeah. so it's yeah. taking control of your physiology and it's you know people don't recognize when they're in the fight flight response because they've never been there before they're in shock mm. uh, maybe it's a car accident something like that they weren't they're not they connect my breathing super high now they're just worrying about what's happened yeah. what's going to happen next what this means when actually that's the moment we would and we do did do coach it into sort of our training at all levels the breathing exercises that you have to coach your breathing for those stress so you might be on the tail ramp and you'll right now's the time to think about your breathing because on the day of the race mm. you are going to be a little bit more nervous naturally mm. if you've never done that thing before for life so you have to then sort of have coached right every time i'm here i take control of my breathing and then you just put yourself in an optimum state that's and not that's not something that you can this is i think again where mis people misconstrue it's not something that you can just do yourself pull out your ass at no, the no, time. you know it's, it's the same as anything you know and as i was i think i was saying to you earlier talking about meditation and, and something that i've been sort of practicing about 10 years now in meditation, you know, but it's the same as anything else. It, you know, you either do it or you don't, you know, quite sort of, you know, you, you, you park your ass on the cushions and do your meditation uh, or you don't. 
the same way you go to the gym or you don't, you know. So it's got to be trained, hasn't it? Yeah. You know, so that in the time when you need it at that moment. But I totally agree in sort of parasympathetic nervous response and, and lowering ourselves so we can think more clearly and, uh, you know, lose, use logical parts of the brain. All that stuff is getting shown in neuroscience now. And thankfully, SF, you know, um, I mean, Navy SEALs are banging it all over the place, aren't they? Box breathing, you know, mm, for example, yeah. which is around the box, obviously, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Um, but, you know... But I, think, I think everyone everyone can, you know, it's, it's, we're talking about extreme <coughs> circumstances. I mean, mm. for, for the everyday, everyday person, I mean, they can practice this kind of stuff. You know, when, when it comes to them reacting, you know, it, it, and it comes back to what you said before, it's, uh, I think one of us said about you have to be aware of your emotions. We have to become an emotional observer. Otherwise, we become a victim of our emotions. Self-awareness, yeah, yeah. yeah. And once you once you're able to do that, you're you're aware. Like road rage, for instance, you know that's coming in. Mm. You can then kick in your box breathing straight away. It takes you straight out of that. This is how I would react to. Mm. You know, it's, it's taking a, pu- a pause in the heat yeah, yeah, of yeah. the moment. Yeah. The bit that I, I agree there, the the emotional side, because going back to the ditch, my uh, what actually happened there was I all of a sudden as a as a senior bloke in a squadron which i was all of a sudden i wanted to be back at home with my mum and i was like what the you know what's this it, and all it was was i suddenly realized it's just fear but it, it manifested itself in a way that i'd never seen before but i'm like well hang on it's just fear well, of course i'm allowed to be scared fearful but i just need to now use that emotion as as soon as you acknowledge it you're like that right because if you don't acknowledge it you end up becoming a flapping headless chicken Running off, it's not breathing properly, deny, denying it, denying it. Me scared? No, yeah. I'm not scared. Mm. Yeah. Or you I'm say, not, I am scared, yeah. and you just focus on what you need to do to get the job done. It's like being on the tailgate. Have I done all my clips up? Have everything ready? When you're scared, you just slow it down. Like, okay, yeah, okay, and it sort of it dispels the negative side How of the emotion. How many times have you looked at the hook? It's still on, isn't it? It's still on, isn't it? Looking at both ends of the wire. Mick 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 Rafferty, the the PGI, used used to say to us, it's it's a numbers game, fellas. It's a numbers (laughs) game. Cheers, mate. Checking out your coping mechanism. Thanks, Mick. Yeah, Yeah, that's a that's a coping mechanism. mechanism, Um, Lads, I'm gonna have to start wrapping this up. Um, That's been good. First half was the best that we never captured. <laughs> I don't know, I think yeah, that warmed yeah, yeah, us yeah, up yeah, for the yeah, second half. Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, I think that shaped it. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, good, yeah. It's made yeah. just feel better. Well, lesson uh, learned there, yeah, lesson exactly. learned. <laughs> it's a numbers yeah. game, that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just as we go around the table, what's the next sort of six months bringing for you? So, uh, who wants to start? Me and Ollie's yeah. next six months are pretty identical, really. We're, we're <coughs> going to spend a bit of time together doing more, more of that SAS. Bit of bit of stuff that's the TV for another show. yeah that's the, TV the TV show, show SS yeah. who does win so we're doing that, that pretty much abroad? we're going to be doing a one for can't another say, country oh. and then we're going to be doing some more in the UK it were well for the UK but somewhere not yet to be d- decided and that's that's pretty much up until yeah. July really isn't it yeah and then there's I mean there's we just launched the app so the Battle Ready 360 program which is mind body and nutrition uh, so that's never developing. Um, uh, app that we're going to be, you know, obviously there's going to be some big developments with that. Uh, we've got the academy as well, which we just started. So that is um, uh, helping veterans, um, putting them back on the map after they leave the forces. Where can people find more information for that? Um, if you go to our website, it's break-point.co.uk um, or any social media channel you find us, but, um, or just stick it in Google with top of the rankings on there. But um, yeah, we do our corporate training from that uh, website and all sorts. So, about yourself for a cheap nice one. Um, I've just launched a website which is called Man on a Mission, which is my surname M A W N on nice. a Mission. Nice. Um, See what you did there. Uh, yeah, you like that. No. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nice, uh, I can't take credit for it, but yeah. 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 So um, I've launched Man on a Mission, which basically is um, podcasts. Yeah. So. I want to do a round two with this. You know, you, know get, what, you know where I am. Get you on, yeah, get you on, Gaz. And um, uh, so doing that um, podcast, it's really around mental skills training program, which is looks at a psychological framework and building proactive mental skills, which again, hopefully people are a bit more proactive about hearing mental skills training rather than mental health. Um, and so it's um, calm, confidence, focus, trust, control, grit, these kind of things and, and building them and actually making change and so on. So, uh, so I developed a program there, 
Um, and also working with Ollie here, you know, we're sort of connected again, Ollie and, and Foxy um, at Breakpoint here doing, Actually, doing stuff I with them, which will be great. You know what? I actually thought, you know, when we came to this world of sort of a bit of corporate training and stuff like that, I just think, didn't think we'd stumble across any other SF guys ever going into this kind of field. So it's a real pleasure to, to meet yeah. two other guys. I think it's a really good natural progression, though. Yeah, I do. Where so we come kind of from. it's partly selfish for me. I love talking about these sorts of things and learning how. Yeah. At the time when we were serving, no one spoke about how we dealt with stress. We just mm. either dealt with it or some people didn't and left. And then, but now it's like, well, clearly we were very good at what we were doing. And I think there's loads of there's a lot of theorists out there. There's a lot of professors that love to profess how you do this stuff. None of them have ever done it, but they talk about how you can do it. Whereas our our group and our sort of uh, peers have, have all done it and actually use different things themselves which sometimes it's good for people to talk about and to sort of uh, actually unpack it themselves and go you know what this is you know we were very good at this and this is what I used to do to cope with that stress so mm. I, I, I love talking about it it's in, insightful for me um, certainly talking to you guys good to see you uh, I think we need a round two yeah we, we do go, we do it this is round two we've already had round three we need round three we need round three or four it could be a regular thing just to come back and shoot the shit and uh, yeah yeah which would be good it'd be good all right awesome lads cheers cheers mate thanks guys it's all awesome take care Right, tip <laughs> uh, <you> imagine <laughs> you wouldn't tell us would you <laughs> well done chaps mate. thanks mate thanks mate very good cheers guys cheers guys thanks mate